Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Bridget and I make home and DIY content here on YouTube. Before we jump into today's video, I just wanted to give a huge thank you and welcome to those of you who are new subscribers. Since my last video, we've surpassed 500 subscribers and I'm really excited to see the Bye Bridget YouTube fam growing. I'm lucky to have you all and just because I'm curious, I'd love to hear down in the comments what was the first video you ever saw on my channel. And if you're not yet subscribed, feel free to hit the button down below and ring the bell if you'd like to be the first to know about new videos. Now let's jump into today's projects. I've got three thrift flips in store for you today that I think you'll really love. Two of them involve items that I can almost guarantee you'll find at any thrift store, a glass vase and a picture frame. I'll be showing you very simple, inexpensive ways to elevate and repurpose these items, but I think what I'm most excited about is actually an old magazine holder I found while thrifting that was in desperate need of a refresh. To see how I transformed each of these items, keep watching, and let's get started with the first one. So this is the magazine holder exactly as I bought it. You can see that it was $15 and it's in pretty rough shape. I mean, this fabric here has tons of stains and stuff and I am not a fan of the material or of course the fact that it just says magazines in this font. I don't really love it. It is also missing one of these kind of end pegs that holds this bottom bar on. You can kind of see how it's assembled inside here and it's just kind of dirty but I've got a few ideas for how we can give it some new life and I'm really looking forward to giving this a makeover. The first step of course is to disassemble the entire magazine holder which was very straightforward. All I had to do was unscrew each of the pegs on the ends and slide the dowels out. Next, I'm setting aside the wooden frame and unfolding the fabric section. I'll be using this fabric as a template to sew a new cover, so in order to get accurate measurements, I'm using a seam ripper to remove the stitching that created the sleeve for the dowels. I repeated this on both ends of the fabric. First, I measured across the long side of the fabric and ended up with a total length of 30 inches. Then I measured from crease to crease where the fabric had been folded over and got a measurement of 26 and a half inches. Finally, I measured the width of the fabric and added a half inch for seam allowance for a total of 15 and a half inches. If you watched my pre-YouTube DIY home tour video, you might recognize this fabric. I originally bought it to reupholster my ottoman, but I ended up having enough extra to use it in several other projects since then. It's perfect for the magazine holder because it's upholstery fabric that is very sturdy and has no stretch to it. So here I'm just cutting out my 30 inch by 15 and a half inch rectangle. Here's where that half inch seam allowance comes in. I'm using quarter inch double sided wonder tape along each of the long sides. This tape is perfect for ensuring an even edge seam while you sew. It's also water soluble so any stiffness dissolves in just one wash. For this project I don't mind the stiff edge but for clothing garments I'd recommend washing it out before wearing. And don't worry I'll be sure to link the tape below. I taped the opposite side as well, added a few quilting clips to hold it in place since the fabric is fairly stiff, and then I sewed 1 8 of an inch in from each edge. If you don't have thread that matches the fabric perfectly, a good rule of thumb is to use thread slightly darker than the fabric since lighter thread tends to stand out, but darker thread is less noticeable to the naked eye. When the edges are sewn, I'm making a small mark halfway down the fabric at 15 inches. Then I'm dividing the crease to crease measurement from before that was 26 and a half inches by two and folding over the new fabric at the 13 and a quarter inch mark on both sides, clipping it into place so that I can sew the dowel sleeves at either end. Thank you. 
When sewing the sleeves, I once again kept the needle about 1 8 of an inch in from the raw edge. Because this fabric doesn't fray, I wasn't worried about raw edges showing on the inside of the magazine holder. And of course, don't forget to trim off any threads when you're done sewing. Now it's time to clean up the wooden frame. After a quick wipe down with some all-purpose spray, it was already looking much better, but there were still a few ugly scuff marks that I wanted to touch up. For this, I'm using a touch-up stick in the shade Walnut. I love these because they have the consistency of a crayon that helps to actually fill in scratch marks while adding color as well. The scratches won't disappear entirely, but it's a huge improvement. Next, I need to make a new peg to replace the one that was missing, so I'm using an existing one to mark off the length I need on a dowel before cutting it down to size. And of course, my miter box saw is the perfect indoor tool to get the job done. The dowel is a bit rough, so I'm quickly sanding down the edges by hand using 220 grit sandpaper. Now it's time to put the hardware inside it so that it can screw into place later. I'm marking off my drill bit with tape so that I know how far to drill into the dowel. When the hole is drilled, I'm adding a bit of wood glue inside it before screwing in the hardware slightly by hand. Then I'm using a hammer to get it snugly in place. Sorry for the shaky camera action here. But as you can see, it worked perfectly and the metal is flush with the edge of the wood. Now it's time to stain the new peg to help it match the existing ones. Fortunately, my Minwax Espresso stain turned out to be a nearly perfect match. When the stain has dried, I'm painting on one good coat of polyurethane to give it a glossy finish. It actually worked out really well to screw it onto a dowel for this step so I could keep my fingerprints off it. As you can see, the side panels are a bit banged up on the sides that were facing outward, so I decided to turn those around to the inside and have the smooth sides exposed when I reassembled the entire magazine holder. The assembly is pretty self-explanatory, and it was so gratifying to see everything fit together perfectly. I'm not someone who subscribes to physical magazines, but a magazine holder like this works equally well for books. It's a nice place to keep things you're currently reading, but don't want sitting out on a table. Since I used fabric I already have in my living room, this new piece will tie together beautifully and be the perfect place for me to keep some of the piano sheet music and books I play from most frequently. And for what it's worth, Brioche the Cat approves, though she's a little bitter that it's already occupied and can't serve as her new hideout. For our second thrift flip, I'm starting off with this $2 cylindrical vase, which I'm thoroughly cleaning to prepare it for contact paper. I'll be using this faux wood paper I already had on hand, but first, I need the measurements of the vase. The height was about 27 centimeters, but I rounded up to 28 to give me a little wiggle room. Then I measured the circumference of the vase, which was ironically also 28 centimeters. The contact paper I'm using has a grid of 1 cm squares on the back, so I'm just counting 28 cm down and making a small mark, before counting another 28 cm across and marking again. Because I want my cut lines to be perfectly straight, I'm using a ruler to extend my markings across the contact paper's backing 
before cutting out my 28 by 28 centimeter square. You could position the wood grain horizontally across the vase, but I wanted to elongate mine, so I'm making it vertical. Since this is a relatively small piece of contact paper, I'm peeling off the entire backing, but you could also peel it off little by little as you wrap your vase. This next step is pretty self-explanatory, but my advice is to wrap slowly, pushing out air bubbles as you go. The nice thing about contact paper is that it's very forgiving, so you can peel it back and readjust if needed. There are two methods of cleaning up the edges. In this first one, I'm cutting slits every centimeter or so along the bottom of the face, then folding them down one by one. You might notice very small ridges if you look closely, but they're subtle enough that it didn't bother me. The second method works really well at the top of the vase. I'm first using my scissors to cut off a little of the excess contact paper before taking a box cutter and running it along the rim of the vase. An X-Acto knife would also work perfectly for this step. You'll notice that it leaves a very clean, precise edge. And believe it or not, that's it! This is an extremely fast, satisfying way to upgrade those vases we always see at thrift stores. I love that the customizations are as limitless as the types of contact paper out there. This would look equally beautiful with a faux marble, in my opinion. I think dried florals or pampas grass would be lovely for a vase like this, but you know me, I had to use it as a propagation vessel for my Monstera Deliciosa cutting. Our last thrift flip today is another really easy one. The first thing you'll need is a picture frame. I'd recommend finding one with minimal textures since we'll be painting it. After removing the glass and backing, I'm mixing up some paint and baking soda in a ratio of about four parts paint to one part baking soda. You can play around with the proportions depending on how grainy you like it. Then you'll paint it directly onto the frame. I love this mixture because it doesn't require priming and it adheres really well to any surface, even this smooth metal. It doesn't matter what type of paint you use either. You could use acrylic or some regular paint from the hardware store like I have here. While the first coat of paint dries, I'm tracing the photo frame's backing onto an IKEA placemat. This particular one is discontinued, but you could use any stiff woven material for this step, such as rattan or cane. I'm then cutting along my traced line to get a rectangle that will fit the frame perfectly. Now that the first coat of paint has dried, I'm adding one more on top of it just to make sure none of the metal shows through. When the second coat has dried, I'm flipping the frame over and adding a layer of Gorilla Hot Glue to the inside edge of the frame. You'll want to work quickly and press the woven material into place before the glue dries. I also added a little extra glue on top. Don't worry too much about how the back of the frame looks since it won't be visible. And with that, you've got a beautiful way to display your earrings. I'm one of those people who loves wearing earrings but forgets to actually put them in unless they're stored somewhere I see them often. This is the perfect solution. This simple DIY is one that can be easily incorporated into any design style depending on the frame and inside material you use. You could achieve a traditional look with an ornate gold unpainted frame or a farmhouse look with a distressed wood frame. I'm really loving how this one gives off boho coastal vibes. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and an extra thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my channel. Your support is quite literally helping me live out my DIY dreams and I'm so glad you're here. If you'd like to see more of my thrift flips, I'll make sure to link that playlist in the description. Thanks again and see you next time.